Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here coming at you with another Contrast Plus painting tutorial and today we're painting the main man himself. Yes, the tutorial you've all been asking for for so long is now finally happening. We are painting Archaon, the Ever Chosen. Yes, the Grand Marshal of the Apocalypse himself. Here he is. Isn't he fantastic? He's so big, I don't have a mount tall enough to be able to hold him. <laughs> so we're going to be able to kind of do full uh, model kind of demonstrations at the side but uh, we're not going to be painting the whole thing at the same time because of course we're not because if you are a fan of the channel you will know that what we like to do here is we like to divide our big miniatures into sections so the three sections that we're going to be dividing him into are the wings door guard and then hip and we're going to be starting with the wings and then I'll choose which one we're going to move on to after that so, <laughs> he's been primed in grace here. And, well, we're going to jump in and we're going to start painting him. The first colour we're going to be using is Agrax Earthshade. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Agrax Earthshade mix. And we're going to be painting this all over the wing membranes. And we're just looking for a nice, smooth coat here. So we're going to use a large brush and we're going to use this lovely big broad brush strokes we're going to move around any excess we're going to watch out for pools that we don't want we're just going to make sure that we get this over the top of all of the wing membranes and because the spines are going to be black it doesn't ultimately matter if you get this on those sections but just move it kind of across the wing like I'm doing from left to right. So that makes it a little bit easier. And there's less opportunity for missed air bubbles this way. If you go this way rather than kind of up and down, just go left to right from spine to spine. That's okay. It's a slightly better technique for this piece. Of course, there are some areas where you can't go side to side. So it's just, for example, up there. And do keep an eye on your stores of this mix on your palette. You don't want it to get too dry because you'll end up with a scratchy finish. Otherwise, you just want to get cracking. So with that Agrax Earthshade applied to the front and the back of the wings, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Seraphim Sepia and we're going to apply this towards the kind of bottom third of each of the wings and then we're going to smooth it out and blend it into that Agrax Earthshade. So we're going to take that Seraphim Sepia neat from the pot and for example just here we'll start here and we'll do a couple of these but what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit more of the Seraphim Sepia and around about this kind of area a little bit more on our brush there we go that sort of amount like that then we're going to wash the brush and then we're just going to smooth it out so we get a nice transition from our Agrax into our Seraphim Sepia. It's very subtle at first, but trust me, it's going to look awesome. So we'll go on to the next one here. Now this is kind of the area that we're looking for, that kind of area of the spine. So we're just going to get this Seraphim Sepia all over this section. Like that. And we're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to smooth it. Just 
just like that. And you just want to continue like this all the way along. So with that Seraphim sepia all applied, as you can see, we've got this nice kind of very subtle brownish blend into that kind of very pale brown. However, what we're going to do is we're not done with the blending just yet. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to make a roughly three parts contrast medium to one part wildwood mix. And we're going to do essentially what we've just done. However, we're going to be doing it a lot less than what we've just done. So down here, we'll just start down here once again. And we're just going to around about the kind of bottom kind of section like that sort of amount here like that we're going to get this over the top then we're going to wash the brush and then we're going to smooth out that transition by just stippling away and moving that paint around until we get that nice kind of fade into that slightly darker brown. Like that sort of thing. Similarly again, I'm just gonna do a couple more. It's going to kind of like a half of that bottom half that we've done. So around about there is where we're gonna add the wildwood. Same again, we're just gonna block in that low area. Like that, wash the brush. And then smooth it out. Like that. So with that done, as you can see, the wings are very, very nearly, nearly there. However, we do have one last blend left to do, and that is gonna be a roughly one-to-one -one mix of contrast medium and wildwood. And it's gonna be the smallest one yet. So what we're gonna do here on this smallest part of the wing is just this kind of little bottom section, just here. We're just gonna paint that in. So we're just gonna make contact over here, and then we're just gonna drag our brush around Like that, we're going to wash the brush and then we're just going to smooth it out one last time. Like that. Same along here the very bottom part. Like that. Wash the brush and then smooth it out. So with that done, the wings are now fully blended and they're looking pretty awesome. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a highlight and these are gonna be two dry brushes. Now the first one we're gonna do is Rakar Flesh. And we're gonna do this on the outside because it'd be slightly easier to demonstrate. But basically what we're gonna do here is we're gonna very gently dry brush this Rakar Flesh over the top of the top kind of two thirds of the wing, just like that. We don't really need to go all the way down. You can of course do this if you want to, but we want those kind of darker points to just remain quite dark. And we're just gonna get this, like this, over the top. And then once that's done, we'll come back. 
So with that Rakar flesh dry brush applied, we're then gonna take some pallid witch flesh and we're gonna very, very gently apply this now over the top. A little too much on my brush there. So with that done, our wing membranes are pretty much finished. The only thing left to do is a little highlight in the wildwood areas, but we're gonna leave that for now because we're gonna come back to it. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move on to the rest of the wing section, and that is all of the spines. Now, we're gonna be taking this down to around about here, just in there, and same on the back, we're gonna be going down to where the straps appear. But the color we're gonna be using is Black Legion. And we're basically gonna be applying this over the top of everywhere that remains. And I'm just gonna start just here. Now, you might switch brushes to a slightly bigger one, but for these kind of slightly smaller areas, you're gonna to wanna to use something like this medium layer brush. Just to ensure that you don't then blob this all over your lovely wing membranes. So just be careful here. And you just want to go around like this. Don't need to do any of the claws and things. So with all of that Black Legion applied, as you can see, to all of these areas, there's a couple of bits that we've missed, which are the skulls, and that's, you know, we've done that on purpose. However, before we do those, what we're gonna do is we're gonna shade all of this black, and the color we're gonna be using for that is Null Oil. And we're just gonna whack it on there, nice and liberally, over the top of all of the black that we've just painted. So with that done, we now have this lovely dark black all the way across that skin at the top. So what we're gonna do is dry brush it. And the color we're gonna be using first for this is Eshin Gray. Now we just wanna be quite careful here. We don't wanna to be too heavy. We do wanna just get this over the top of all of the skin, just picking out all of the scales and things. So with that Eshin Grey dry brush applied, we're then gonna take some Dawnstone and we're gonna do this over the top quite gently now.
So with that done, we can now move on to the next color, and that is going to be some Skeleton Horde. I'm going to be applying this over the top of the skulls that are scattered around the actual skin, like this. So we've got one there, or not two there, but one just there, got one in there as well, like so. And we're also going to apply this over the top of our remaining talons and things like that. So with that skeleton horde applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some fire dragon bright. We're going to thin it down with sort of four or five parts water to make it nice and runny. And we're going to apply this to the little grooves scattered all around the skin. So on this wing here, as you can see, you've got them in between the scales. What we're going to do is we're just going to run this fire dragon bright. In there like that. Now don't worry if you overlap just a little bit. That's okay. That's the whole point as to why it's a little bit runny. Makes it a lot easier to just fill these areas. Make it a little bit easier on yourself when you're doing this bit. Like so. In addition, what we're going to do, and this isn't ideal, but we can thin some down a little bit less as we would normally. But up here on this kind of area, before the talon, and around the kind of, uh, this kind of little bit of, it almost looks like armor, but it's not. Around there, what we're going to do is we're just going to pick out the edges. So for example, just around here, we're just going to apply this Fire Dragon Bright like that. And like that sort of thing. I'm going to pick out the edges as I've just done there. But otherwise, we're just going to continue on. So with that now done, as you can see, all the way around, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Flesh Terrors Red and we're going to apply this over the top of those kind of armor panels and bits of skin. What we're going to do is we're just going to avoid doing this over the top of the grooves because the grooves are pretty much there. We're just going to do a little shade on those. But what we're going to do is we're going to take some Flesh Terrors Red and over the top of this kind of section and this bit here, as well as those areas on by the talons, so we're just going to apply this now over the top of the whole section. And what you'll see, you get this nice dark red that will dry quite dark over the top of the black. It's already pre-highlighted for you. So with that flesh terror's red applied to those details, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Fugan orange. I'm going to apply this over the top of our little grooves. Just going to add a little bit of depth, a little bit of extra color in there. So with that done, we're now going to finish off all of the black 
And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some administratum gray. I'm gonna use a small dry brush here. I'm gonna be very, very targeted with how we do this. So what we wanna do is we just wanna very gently catch the sharpest points around these areas. So with that done, the wings section of Archaeon is very nearly finished. The only thing left to do is the large talons and the little ones as well. And of course, to highlight up our little skulls. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the large talons and all the other talons as well. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Reichland flesh shade and we're gonna be applying this over the big talons here, here and here. And similarly on this side, one, two, and three. We're not going to be doing this on the little ones because they don't need it. So we're going to take this Reichland flesh shade and we are going to be doing a little bit of blending here. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this from the base of it up to around about halfway. And then we're just going to lift off that excess and smooth it out. So I've got a little bit too much there on my brush. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to take that Reichland flesh shade like that. We're going to take it out to around about halfway like that. We're going to wash the brush and then we're just going to smooth out that transition much as we've done a fair few times already. A bit of detritus there on the end of that talon like so. It's quite subtle at first but it'll dry a little bit darker. That's exactly what we want to happen. Similarly down here we're just going to take that Reichland flesh shade up to around about there I'm gonna get it all over this section like that. We're gonna wash that brush. And then we're gonna smooth it out like that. And we wanna do this on both sides of all of our talons. So with that done, we're then going to take some wild wood and we're going to add a little bit of it towards the base and then once again we're going to blend it out. So on the smaller ones, what we're going to do here, a little too much on my brush, is we're just going to add, like I said, around the base of the talon, and add this wild wood like this, kind of in a stippling motion. And we're then going to wash the brush and then we're just going to Smooth out that transition. Like that. It's very subtle on the smaller ones, whereas on the slightly bigger one, we're gonna, again, it's a little too much paint. <laughs> we're just gonna add this wildwood like that to around about there. Then we're going to wash the brush. And then we're going to smooth it out. So with that done, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Ushabti bone and we're going to use this to highlight all of the skulls and all of the talons. So we're just going to start picking out all the edges. And this will conclude the painting of the wings. So that feels like it's a good time to tell you about our sponsor. Serious readers, enjoy daylight indoors with a serious light.
Serious lights are designed as a tool to help you see detail and colour and to enjoy what you love doing without straining your eyes to see. Serious lights use daylight wavelength technology, which replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as possible, helping you to pick your colours accurately and just as importantly, see what you're doing when you're using them. Serious Readers is a British company and the Serious Lights range is built right here in the UK. You can select a number of different options and if you use offer code WARHIPSTER at checkout, they'll throw in a free compact light with any purchase in the Serious Lights range. Find out more in the links below. So with that now done, the first section of Archeon is now finished and it looks pretty awesome. So. What we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the next section and that is going to be the main man himself so we're going to paint him next and then we're going to move on to Dorgar's body because so this is just easier that way this way we can kind of paint our way down the model having done the wings then we do him and then we can do the body and it just makes it easier in terms of being able to hold him if you're doing it in full assembly like i am so what we're going to do first is we're going to take some black legion and we're going to start applying this over the top of all of archaeon's black armor and this is going to include the field of the shield all of his plate excluding the trim but it doesn't matter if you do get some of this on the trim because we are going to be going over that with a metallic So with all of that Black Legion applied to all of Archeon's armor, as you can see, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take some Baal Red and we're gonna apply this over the top of his cloak and his helmet plume. I just wanna slap this Baal Red all over. Just like this. So with that Baal Red all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Gore Grunt of Fur and we're going to apply this to all of his leather. So we've got a strap going across the front of the shield here. We've got his belt and we've got a couple of straps on his arms that you can actually see. But most of them you can't really, really see. He's not got tons. And so with that done, we're then gonna take some snake bite leather. I'm gonna apply this to the saddle cloth. And with that done, we're then going to take some rattling grime. And we're going to apply this over the top of that little pouch on his hip. Like that and we're also going to apply this over the top of the sword wrap so with that done what we're now going to do is going to start working on the metallics now it's slightly out of order to what we would normally do we would do the metallics last however we do have some slightly difficult and tricky ones to get to which if we make any mistakes on top of already painted areas will just be annoying so we're going to start on the metallics now now the colour we're going to be using first is Retributor Armour and we're going to be applying this over the top of all of that gold trim and there is a lot of this so you just want to have the box art in front of you to make sure you're placing it in the right places but it's basically the designs here on the shield we've got the sword hilt 
all of the trim across all of the armor. As well as his faceplate. The little crown he's wearing. As well as some areas on the saddle. So we've got the inner areas of the saddle itself. So we've got like this kind of eight pointed star just here. Like this, and it's the same the deal on the back. Otherwise, you just want to go around with this retributor armor, picking out all of these details. And then once that's done, we shall return. So with all of that retributor armor applied, all the way around, as you can see, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down iron warriors and we're going to apply this over our silver details. Now there's not tons of these, but we do have what remains of the saddle. We have all of the mail that he's wearing. So with that done, whilst we haven't finished all of the base coats, what we do need to do is we need to do some shades. Because again, well, if we finish off these horns, for example, uh, before we get to doing the next bit of shades, it then just makes shading the rest of him a little bit complicated. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a roughly four parts flesh terrors red to one part contrast medium maybe a little bit maybe one or two parts contrast medium just because we want to make sure that we've got a nice flowing flesh terrors red here and we're going to be applying this over the top of the cape and we don't want this to be pure flesh terrors red because as i said we want this to be a nice smooth coat but also we don't want it to just like completely dominate that red but what we are going to do is we're just going to start applying this over the top of the cape this is going to do a really nice job of shading that bile red, but also just giving us this beautiful enriched color on all of the red details. And we're gonna be doing this over the top of the helmet plume as well. But once that's done, then wanna take just some fresh terrors red on his own, straight from the pot. And there is a little tassel on his shield that we're gonna color in as well with flesh terrors red. Only that one we don't need to thin down. So with that flesh terrors red applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some skeleton horde and we're gonna apply this over the top of the skulls that are scattered around. So we've got one here on the saddle. We've got the ones up here on his chest. Like that. And we've got some on the back of the saddle as well. They're situated in here. And with that skeleton horde all applied, we're now going to take some Griff Hound Orange and we're going to apply this over the top of the sword blade. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to add some shades to the model. Yes, those horns aren't done, but that's because the shade is exactly the same as the next, well, first shade that we're going to be doing. The first shade we're going to be doing is Agrax Earthshade, and we're going to be applying this over the top of all of the gold. So we've got, for example, here on the shield. Just like this. Just gonna finish off this section.
like so. We're also going to use this Agrax Earth Shade to shade the Gorgonta fur. Like that. We're going to use this to shade this tassel down here. We're not going to use it to shade the cape or the plume. We're going to use it to shade the saddle cloth. That sort of thing. And then, as mentioned, we're going to be using this over the top of all of the horns. On Archeon himself. So with that Agrax Earth shade applied to all of these details, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Nuln Oil. I'm going to apply this over the top of the black armor and the silver. So with that done, Archeon is looking pretty cool. However, we've got one last shade to do, and that is some Drooky Violet. I'm gonna be applying this to the recesses of the cloak. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take small amounts of this on our brush, and then we're just gonna run this into the recesses. like this. So with that done, Archeon is now at what I would call a war hipster battle ready. Well, the rider himself, the man himself, I should say, is at war hipster battle ready. However, we are of course not gonna leave him there. We're gonna take him to the next level before we move on to the rest of Dorgar. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this by adding some highlights, some layers, and a little bit of blending in various different places, for example, on that sword. But before we get to that, we're gonna start with the highlights on the black armor. And the color we're gonna be using first for this is Dark Reaper. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna very carefully now pick out all of the edges with our Dark Reaper. Now, this is gonna be a nice kind of bluish finish that we want here, which will really distinguish him from Dorgar's more kind of, well, gray finish. So we make him look a little bit cleaner, a little bit more menacing. So we're just gonna start picking out all of the edges across all of his black armor, just like this. You just take your time, and work your way around the model. And then once that is done, We'll come back. So with that Dark Reaper all applied to all of our black armor, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Rust Gray. And we're gonna apply this as a kind of smaller highlight to all of our black sections. So what we're looking for is we're looking for sharp details. For example, this area on the shield. I'm going to apply this as a much smaller highlight going along that sharp edge. Now anything that's like kind of like a highlight across an armor panel for example, we don't want to do the whole thing but on these kind of sharp, 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 sharp edges like that we just want to pick out the whole area. Whereas we've got about halfway along on this shield area, we do have a little notch. So what we want to do is we want to take a teeny tiny amount of this and just about half of it, apply a very tiny highlight. Like that sort of thing. And we're gonna go around like this 
picking out all of these areas. So with that rust gray all applied, what we're then gonna do is we're gonna take some Fen Rizzi in gray, and we're just gonna add this to the sharpest points across all of the black armor. Just like this, just adding little dots. Like that. Same here across the front. And so with that Fenrisian gray applied to those sharpest points, we're then just gonna finish off the black by adding a little bit of a bluish sheen over the top of all of it, just to blend all of those highlights together and also just to kind of deepen that black and add a little bit of a hint of blue across all of it. And the color we're gonna be using for that is Drakenhof Nightshade. Now you don't need loads of this as we do this. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna, as before, we're just gonna start painting this over the top like this and as you can see already on that shield it makes our sharp bright points appear a lot brighter whilst also just bringing that black and the dark reaper together so we just want to get this all over like this and as i said you really don't need loads of this as you're doing it you don't want to kind of drown out any of the highlights that you've made. So just take it a little bit of a time. So with that Drakenhof Nightshade all applied, as you can see, we've now got this gorgeous blue armor-ish, well, blue-ish armor on the black. It's a really nice sheen that we've got on there. So what we're going to do now is move on because the black armor is all done. And we're going to move on to painting all of the gold because this is really going to elevate him and take him to the next level. Now the color we're going to be using is once again Retributor Armor. And we're going to be using this to brighten up some of the kind of flatter and bigger areas of the model. So we're talking about areas like this little section just up here on the pauldron. We've got some areas around here on the shield. We've got the area just here on the front of the saddle as well and we've got some stuff there on the back but ultimately a lot of these details are quite small so we can get away with just a highlight but on these larger bits we want to just brighten them up just a tiny little bit so we're going to take that retributor armor and for example just in there it's quite difficult to film this but what we're going to do is we're just going to take that retributor armor and we're going to pop this like this over the top of the flat of the panel like that and same again just on this side. And this is just gonna brighten it up, make it nice and shiny, like we want it. Same again, just there, just skipping over that recess where the Agrax air shade has really settled in there. Like so. And we can just move on to the various other little areas that we want to brighten up. So for example, on the shield, got these little kind of flat bits just here. Just want to add a little bit of shine in there. So with that Retributor Armor reapplied to those areas that we talked about, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thin down Liberator Gold and we're going to use this to pick out all of the edges on all of our gold details. Now this is going to take a little bit of what time. You just want to go steady Take it section by section and just very carefully pick out the edges. I'm going to start here on the shield as I have done throughout the rest of the video. And then what you're going to see is once all this is on, it's going to elevate the model. As is often the case with Chaos. Once you get all that trim highlighted, it starts to look very nearly done. So with that Liberator Gold all applied, as you can see, that gold's taken a massive leap forward. So what we're going to do now is we're going to finish it off by taking some thin down Stormhost Silver. And we're going to apply this to the sharpest points on all of our gold, just to give it a real little bit of a shine. So just up here, for example, on the shoulder pad, 
that little corner there on the shield, just there as well. So with that done, all of our gold is now finished and it looks absolutely fantastic, even if I do say so myself. So what we're going to do is move on now and we're going to move on to the sword blade as voted for on the live stream that we're currently on right now. Wave hello to everybody on stream if you're watching at home. So we're going to be moving on to the sword blade here and the colour we're going to be making is a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part blood angels red. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint this all the way along the blade and then we're gonna lift off some of that excess so we get that nice blend across that kind of central section of the blade. So, I'm gonna take that Blood Angels Red, we're gonna start down here at the base, like this, and we're just gonna paint this all the way up. It's nice and thin, as you can see, and we're gonna paint it over the other side as well, like that. And then, we're gonna wash the brush And then just down the middle of the blade, basically going to lift it off. Just like that. And then we can build up that Blood Angels Red a little bit more if we want to, along the sides. Like that and just make sure to keep some of that original Griff Hound Orange right down the middle. We want to accentuate that central section of the blade. Just there like that. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Blood Angels Red. And we're gonna do almost the same thing, we're gonna keep it towards the sides. And then of course, if we do get a straight line, we're just gonna blend it in a little bit. So I'm gonna take that Blood Angels Red. I'm gonna add this, like this, coming up the side of the blade. Like that, all the way to the top. Then we wash the brush. And then, where the two colours meet, we're just going to blend it, like that. You can do this as many times as you like with this mix now, because it's sufficiently thin enough that it will get down to a nice colour. So I'm probably going to do this twice. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to create a glaze and there's going to be some Troll Slayer orange mixed with some water, roughly four or five parts. So four or five parts water to one part Troll Slayer orange. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint this over the top of that middle of the blade just to really kind of add a little bit of warmth in there and prep the ground for when we're going to do our highlight in just a moment. So we're just going to take a small amount of this on our brush. And as you can see, it's extremely thin. And what we're going to do is we're just going to run this along the in that kind of central line of the blade like that and do this on the other side as well like this just going to bring it all the way down like that. Now if you've got too much of an obvious line, you can, like with the contrast medium stuff, you can just come in there with a clean brush and just 
just smooth it out just a little bit. So with that Troll Slayer orange glaze applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Fire Dragon Bright. I'm gonna apply this as a highlight to all of our edges on the blade. Now don't worry if this is a little bit stark, it will be in some places. However, we are gonna be blending it all together towards the end. For now, just wanna take this Fire Dragon Bright very carefully now. Pick out all the edges. So with that Fire Dragon bright highlight applied, as you can see, we've now got this really nice sort of almost glow effect on the blade. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Yiri or Yellow. I'm going to add this to the sharpest points on the blade. So we've got the very tip of the sword like that. And then we're just gonna bring it down just a little bit. Like that. And like that. Same again on the central part of the blade. And bring it down just a little bit. Kind of like that sort of amount. And then on everywhere else, so for this example, those little spikes and things, we're just gonna pop a little dot of this on the absolute sharpest point. Just like that. And similarly on these kind of areas. So with that year real yellow applied, we're then gonna take a teeny tiny dot of Corax white. We're just gonna add this at the very tip of the blade, like that. Make sure you do it on the back as well, just to really strengthen it up on both sides. Like so. And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is finish off the blade by taking a small amount of Fugan Orange. I'm gonna apply this over the top of the entirety of the sword. This is just gonna to smooth together all of our colors and just make them all feel a little bit more part of the scene. Just like that. You only really need about half a brush full. Like so. So with that done, the sword is now finished so we can move on to our next detail and that is going to be the red cape. Now, this is gonna be slightly different to how we're gonna be doing the plume. So we're not gonna be focusing on that just for the moment. Instead, we're just gonna be focusing directly on that cape. And what we're gonna do is our first color is going to be some Evil Sun Scarlet. And what we're gonna do here is we're basically gonna re now relay this over the top of all of our flat areas. On the cape. So we want this to be nice and bright whilst keeping that lovely shading that we've got.
So with that Evil Sun Scarlet applied, just whilst we're waiting for it to dry, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Black Templar and we're gonna apply this as a little blend over the kind of tips of the plume. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that Black Templar on our brush. We're just gonna pick a place to start and I'm just gonna start just here. I'm gonna go from the tips downwards. So we're just gonna add this Black Templar like this, coming up to around about there. Just like that. And then what we're going to do is wash the brush. And then we're just going to smooth that out just a little bit. Like so. I'm just going to do this across all of them. So with that Black Templar all applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thinned down Wild Rider Red. I'm going to use this to highlight both the hair plume and the cloak. And so with that Wild Rider Red applied, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some thinned down Fire Dragon Bright. And we're gonna apply this as a little spot highlight. But we're also gonna use this to highlight the kind of front part of his plume just here. So we're just gonna pick out all of those strands like this. Basically what he wanted to do is go from a really bright highlight at the front into that mid highlight that we've got with the Wild Rider Red. And into the black. So it looks somewhat like that. Whereas on the cape, what we're gonna do and pick out the sharpest points. At least the ones that really catch the eye. Just like that sort of thing. And so with that Fire Dragon Bright applied, we're then gonna take a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part Blood Angels Red mix. And we're gonna apply this just over the top of our cloak. And this is just gonna pull it all together and add a little bit more kind of blood readiness in there. So with that done, all of our red details are now finished. So we can, well, it's still drying at the moment, but we've got this beautiful blood red cape and well, what we're gonna do is move on now to our next color. And that is going to be some thinned down pallid witch flesh. We're gonna be using this to highlight Archeon's horns. So he's got the ones here on his helmet, but also the ones on his shoulders as well.
So with that pallid witch flesh applied, we're then gonna take some screaming skull and use this to highlight the skulls. And so with that done, our final highlight on Archeon is going to be some thinned down iron breaker. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the silver. So with that done, Archeon himself is now, well, Pretty much finished there's one thing left to do on him but we're going to do it a little bit later because well it's time to move on to the rest of the model so we're going to be painting dorgar in now and well the color we're going to be using is much the same as we did on the wings we're going to be using a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part agrax earth shade and we're going to be coating this all over the kind of softer areas of the model so this is going to be kind of his inside this little belly type thing and the place to start is on the necks of Dorgar so we're just going to get our brush under there like that and then we're just going to start painting this all the way down just like this and we want to just kind of use the box art determine where this goes but we've got kind of most of it is just on the belly comes all the way down the tail it's a little bit of the kind of arms So with all of that Agrax Earth Shade and Contrast Medium Mix applied to all of these areas, as you can see around here, like this, it's still drying at the moment, but that's okay, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually paint in the heads, and then we're gonna do all of the black, because we've got a lot of blending to do on the black into the armor, for example, around here. We want this to kind of blend into the Agrax Earth Shade and same along here, but we need it to be completely dry before we do. So. What we are going to do is we're going to work on those heads as mentioned and the color we're going to be using first is Asaman blue and we're applying this over the top of our zeech head right here in the middle over the top of all the feathers. So with that Asaman blue applied, we're then gonna take some Gut Ripper Flesh and we're gonna apply this over the top of our Nurgle head.
And with that Gut Ripper Flesh applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Flesh Terrors Red and we're going to apply this over the top of the corn head. Doesn't matter if we get this over the top of the hair. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to begin our blending. And there is quite a lot of it to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a roughly four parts black legion to two parts contrast medium. And you could add a little bit more if you wanted to, just to ensure that it's nice and smooth on the palette. But essentially, we just want to kind of create a little puddle of black legion and have some contrast medium in there to both make it into that kind of lovely dark brownish gray that we get from thinned down black legion, but also to improve the flow of it. So. We're going to go through this section by section. We're not going to be painting the whole thing in this color because, well, we've already seen that we don't need to up here on the back. But on the areas that we want to blend, we've got this arm here, that arm there, the leg, and we've got the tail. Now we're going to start on the tail. And what we're going to do here is we're going to paint this. See that this rock is? We're basically going to paint this all the way along and then we're just going to smooth it out around here. But in order to do that, we're going to start from this end so that it, the wettest part is at this point when we come to blend it. Rather than do this, get all that done, and then when we come back up here to kind of correct it, it's going to get all dry liney and stuff. So we're just going to start painting this over the top of the tail like this. Now, the back of the tail on both instances is going to be black. And this part of the tail is going to have that kind of lovely orangey red fiery thing that's going on on the box art. But for now, we just want to get this on like this. As you can see, it's taking me a little, a little while to make sure that we get all of that covered, which is why we don't start up that end. So we've got that done. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start running this up the tail itself. We've made it to the rock. I'm going to stop at this little kind of spike just here. Same on the other side as well. Like that. We're going to just go straight across like that. And we're going to very quickly wash the brush. And then we're going to absorb most of that Black Legion. off the tail, like that, and between each of the tail spikes. So there we go. So we've got that lovely little fade going on there. Just going to bring a little bit more of it off. There we go like that. I'm going to replicate that on the other one, but we're not going to do that just for now. Because what we are going to do is on the tail itself up to this point, right? So what we're going to do is you see where these little kind of indentations are? We're basically going to now kind of come all the way up the tail and then we're going to lift off the paint in between each of the spikes. So we're just going to start this here. We're going to go one, two, three, and four and five like that that should be enough for now then we're going to wash the brush and then we're going to take off the excess that we don't want
like that. And then we're just going to continue all the way along up until we get up to here. So we want to do this in kind of batches of five. So here's the next one. So one, two, three, four, five. Like that, wash, and blend. like that. I'm going to go all the way up, as mentioned, I'm going to do this on both sides. However, just for the moment, we're just going to hit pause on that so we can move on to the next section. The next section here is going to be around the leg. Now, once again, we're going to kind of bring this down over across, and then we're going to lift off the bit that we don't want. So we're just going to start up here. And then we're going to bring this down about half of that muscle there like that we're going to wash the brush and then we're going to smooth out the transition like that and then it's going to move into a much darker black around here on the muscles. Well, on the spikes. Like so. It's okay, we can just leave that because we're gonna do exactly the same thing up here on the arm. And then I'll leave you to it. <laughs> so this kind of s solid section here, we're just gonna cover that over like this. You can do a little bit of blending around there if you want to, but you don't need to. So you can get that on like that. And then over the top of that little bit of muscle there, we're going to cover it over into the fold. And then around about half of this muscle here, we're going to cover it over. We're going to wash the brush. And then We're going to smooth out that transition. So with that done, it looks a little bit shabby, but what we're going to do now is we're going to fix it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take Black Legion on its own. Now we do have some contrast medium open because this is going to help us when it comes to doing some of the kind of little bit more difficult areas. And this is, for example, getting it so that that blend isn't just kind of like a, a half, it doesn't just be having a hard transition suddenly. So what we're gonna do is for example, around there on that shoulder, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Black Legion on our brush and then just over about half of that muscle where we've added the kind of that blend, we're just gonna start painting the Black Legion like that. As you can see, we've got that hard transition. So we're gonna wash the brush I'm going to grab some contrast medium and then we're going to add that over the top of that hard transition like that just to continue that blending so it kind of moves more into the blue black legion rather than just being a hard sudden transition and we can obviously clean the brush and do as we have done several times in the video so far and just mop up any of the excess but otherwise, we're then going to take the Black Legion. We're just going to apply it over the top of the majority of Dorgar, like that. Now, of course, that's not all of the blending. There is quite a lot to do, but with that under your belt, it should be a lot easier now. Get the rest of it done. If 
you just want to avoid any areas that aren't going to be black, such as the hair. You can try to avoid the skulls as well, but it's not the end of the world if you do get it on there because we can always correct it with some grey seal. So with that Black Legion applied all over like this, the keen-eyed amongst you will have noticed that I haven't done anything to the inside of the tail. And that's because I thought I would actually demonstrate that to you. But we've done the legs, we've done the arms, and we've done the outside. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking some Black Legion here. And we are, again, just neat from the pot, but on the tail kind of hairs, we're going to paint this all over until around about the base of where they stop. It's around about there. Like that. We're just going to bring it onto the tail itself just a little bit of a way. Then we're going to wash the brush. And then just around there. I'm just going to lift some of it off like that. Whereas on all of the spikes around the tail, what we're going to be doing is we're adding just a little bit of Black Legion to the spike itself. like that. And like that. And we're just going to go around across all of them. Just like that. Till we get to around about the darkest part of the tail. We're just going to add a little bit more black legion on the actual body of it, like so. And then we're gonna wash that brush. And we're just gonna smooth it out. It doesn't have to be 100% perfect. And you can do the smoothing out on the spikes themselves, but you probably won't need to, because when we come to do some dry brushes later, It'll all blend together and these spikes are reasonably small. So with all of that done, we've got all of our Black Legion on there now. So that's the biggest job now finished. Well, no, it's not finished, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a little bit of shading, a little bit more shading, I should say, and that's gonna be some Seraphim Sepia. I'm gonna be playing, applying this all over the top of the tail. So, well, not all over the top, but all over the top of the soft inner parts of the tail. So we're just going to start down here. And we're just going to start applying this Seraphim Sepia like this. Kind of just like how we did on the wings. This is going to add that little bit of warmth in there. That we want. Just like this. I 
And so with all of that seraphim sepia applied, we're then going to take some Nuln oil and we're going to apply this over the top of all of our black details. Now, we can run this a little bit onto the tail, the soft details as well if we want to. It'll just add a little bit of extra shading on there and just kind of really kind of buff up those kind of little bits of blending that we've done. And ultimately what we want to do here with the Nuln oil is just kind of really kind of smooth out. our black details. So with all of that null oil applied, you have this really dark black as we did on the wings. So what we're gonna do now, whilst we're waiting for it to dry, is we're gonna take some rattling grime and we're gonna apply this over the top of Archeon's hairs, well, Dorgar's hairs. So we've got some there on each of the arms. Got some on his belly and some on his back. Now that that Nuln oil is all dry, what we're going to do is we're going to dry brush all of our black with some Eshin Grey, just like before. So with that Eshin Grey dry brush applied, we're then going to take some Dawnstone. We're going to gently dry brush this over the top. So with that Dawnstone dry brush applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Administratum Grey and we're going to lightly dry brush this over the sharpest points, just like we did before. So we're mostly looking for the scales. So with that done, all of our black is very nearly finished. We've just got one last thing to do, and that is to take some thinned down storm vermin fur. And on some of our really large muscles, which haven't really kind of gotten a dry brush. So for example, just here on this, uh, on this leg, we're just gonna draw a little highlight. Got some just here as well. Like so. And 
up here on the arm as well. So with that done, all of the black is now finished. Well, excluding that breastplate, but we're gonna come back to that a little bit later because what we are in fact gonna do now is we're gonna take some pallid witch flesh and I'm gonna use this to very gently dry brush up the middle of the tail. Just like that. And then we can very, very gently run this along the sides. So with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna move on to that lovely red blend, where it's an orangey fiery blend that we have on the base of the tail. And so in order to do this first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part flesh terrors red mix. And we're gonna paint this across that middle bit of the tail, and then we're gonna blend it out around about here into our, well, our lovely color that we've already got. So we're just gonna start around here. We do kind of wanna make sure that it's not kind of too stark. So like I said, we're gonna come up to around about here. We're gonna wash the brush. And then we're going to start blending it out what we can do if it's a little bit kind of out of control like i've got it there we can just grab a little bit of contrast medium and that will help us smooth it Just like that. So with that flesh terror is red applied. What we're then going to do is we're going to take some Mephiston red and we're going to use this to dry brush over the top of our tail. Quite softly here. I'm going to bring it up. along the hairs. Like that. I'm just gonna, just gonna dry brush this along the spikes as well. Kind of up to around about there. So it just goes on to the pallid witch flesh a little bit. But what we're also gonna do with this Mephiston red, is we're also gonna dry brush this around these kind of two hooves as well. So with that Mephiston red dry brush applied, we're then gonna take a small amount of Troll Slayer Orange. I'm going to start applying this 
along our central our central edge. And with that now done, we're going to take some thinned down Fire Dragon Bright. I'm going to use this to add a little bit more brightness <laughs> to our highlight. And so what we're going to do is we're just kind of kind of cross a middle here. We're going to add this like this. Bring it along a little bit more. Like that. And similarly, up the hairs towards the base of the hairs of the tail. We're going to add this Fire Dragon Bright Like that. Similarly, what we're going to do is we're going to use this Fire Dragon Bright to highlight over the top of our Mephiston Red Dry Brush that we've done. Around the hooves. So with that done, while still on the subject of Fire Dragon Bright, what we're going to do is we're going to thin it down with sort of four or five parts water and we're going to once again do what we did up on Archeon's wings, or Dorgar's wings, and we're going to be picking out all of the kind of recesses and grooves and things that we can see around here like this. And we've just got it so thin that we can just drop it in there like that. And this is going to take a little while. So just take your time and make your way around the model. So with that Fire Dragon Bright applied to all of those little recesses, as you can see, it took a little while, but it looks awesome. Now, we're waiting for those to dry fully because we need them to um, before we do our Fugan Orange. But whilst we are waiting for those to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Flesh Terrors Red. And just like we did on the wings, we're going to apply this over the top of our red highlighted black areas. Like that. Then we're going to wash the brush. And then just towards the top here, we're just going to lift off some of that red. So we get that little bit of a blend going on. I'm going to do that on both. And 
with that done, we're then going to take a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part Blood Angels Red. And we're going to apply this as our little glaze over the top of our tails. Just to tie everything together and to really give that impression of a fiery glow. And finally, for this section of the tail, what we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny amount of Agrax Earthshade. And just to kind of smooth these two kind of highlights together, the pallid witch flesh and the Mephiston Red, we're just going to brush over some of that Agrax. Like that, not very much at all. You can use a clean brush just to wipe off any excess. Can build it up. So with that done, we are still waiting for all of those Fire Dragon Bright recesses to dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some thinned down grey sear and we're going to use this now just to tidy up areas such as the hooves and any of the little skulls we've painted over one of the areas like the talons so with that gray sear applied to all those bits what we're now going to do so we're going to take some Fugan Orange, Fugan Orange, Fugan Orange, however you say it. I'm going to use this to shade our most largest of sigils and recesses that's the word I'm looking for so like that just like we did on the wings so with that fugan orange applied we're then just going to take a teeny tiny little dot Yeary or yellow. I'm going to apply this right in the middle of our eight pointed star. Like that. We can also apply this in the middle of the little arrows as well. And so just like with the sword, we're going to take a teeny tiny dot of Corax White and place that directly in the middle. Like that. Make it look nice and glowy. So with that sigil on the leg finished, what we're then going to do is we're going to take some Skeleton Horde and we're going to apply this over the top of all of the skulls, all of the fangs, well, talons, and the hooves. Now, do be careful because scattered around the model is the odd sneaky Stormcast helmet. We've got nothing but skulls there, but on the tummy, this one just here a Stormcast helmet, so we're not going to be painting that skeleton horde. 
So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Black Legion. This is the last time we're taking Black Legion, I think. I hope. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to apply this over Dorgar's breastplate. And just whilst we're waiting for that breastplate to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some wildwood. I'm going to apply this over the straps and our Nurgle heads, horns. So with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some thin down Retributor armor. I'm going to use this to paint in the trim on the brass plate, as well as the little belt buckles and those Stormcast helmets. So with that Retributor armor applied, what we're going to do is we're going to finish off the gold and the black in the same way that we did Archaon's armor. Now we're not going to film it because we've already done it once before and, well, this video is already long enough. But, you know, as, as per usual, we're going to be using that Agrax Earth shade to shade all of that gold. The Null Oil to shade the black. We're going to highlight it in the same way. So with that gold and that black finished off in the exact same way as Archaon, it is looking a little bit bare, but don't worry. We do have that final thing to do, but it's going to be the same thing on the chest plate as it is on those runes on Archaon's shield. So what we're going to do in the meantime, just before we get to that, is we're going to take a roughly one-to-one -one mix, of contrast medium and wildwood. And on these hooves, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this and we're going to apply this over the top of the hoof and then we're going to take it off. We're going to blend it. So I'm going to add this over the top of the top half of the hoof like that. I'm going to wash the brush and then we're just going to smooth it out like so. Same again. And with that done, we're then going to shade each of those hooves with a bit of Reichland Flesh Shade. Not very much, but we are going to put this over the whole thing. Like so. So with that right and flesh shade applied, we're then going to take some thin down Ushabti bone. I'm going to use this to highlight all of the hooves, the talons, and our remaining skulls. So I'm just going to be picking out the edges here. So with that Ushabti bone applied to all of those talons and things, he's looking pretty close to being done. Can you guess what we haven't done yet? <laughs> I've added some of the silver to the chains because we've already done that on the saddle, so we don't need to show that again. And well, what we're going to do is we're going to take these heads one at a time and we're going to start with the Nurgle head, then the Zinch head, and then finally the Corn head. So. What we're going to do next on the Nurgle head is we're going to take some Plague Bearer Flesh and we're going to apply this over the top of our Gut Ripper Flesh to add a little bit more kind of Nurgliness 
into the proceedings. As you can see, it already looks suitably disgusting. So with that done, it's still drying at the moment, but that's okay, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Militarum Green, and we're gonna apply this over the top of his bottom lip. Now, it doesn't matter if it's still wet. This will just merge with the Plague Bearer flesh quite nicely. You do just wanna make sure that you wash your brush between each pass. That way you don't get any Plague Bearer flesh making its way into your Militarum green pot. So with that Militarum green applied, we're then gonna take a spot of the lupus pink. I'm gonna apply this to the kind of exposed flesh around there on the neck. You don't need very much of this at all. We don't want to make this too pink. And with that done, we then want to take some Naz Dreg yellow and we're going to apply this over the top of the little boils and warts. Just over the top of all the green. That's okay. Let's get some just down there. And a couple of little growths just here. Which we're going to apply this to as well. Like so. We've overspilled just a little bit there, so I'm just going to get my brush in there, just grab that up. Like that. We've got a couple of them actually on the the neck of Dorgar. Well, we've done our Agrax air shade, so we're just going to pop that on there as well. And then similarly, we've got these tiny little ones scattered all around him. We just want to add little bits of Nasdreg yellow too. And with that done, we're then going to take some Agrax Earth Shade and we're going to apply this over the teeth. And with that Agrax Earth Shade applied, we're then going to take a teeny tiny amount of the Lupus Pink. We're going to apply this over the top of the gums. So with that done, we're just going to move on for the moment. We're going to let it all dry before we do any highlights on that head. But the Nurgle head's looking pretty good. So we're going to move on to the Zinch head. And the colour we're going to be using is Agaros Dunes. And we're going to be applying this over the top pretty much all of the remaining external details. around the beak, and around the eyes. And so just whilst we wait for that to dry, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some Drakenhof Nightshade, that's way too much, and we're gonna use this to shade Feathers. Just going to take the edge off that Asaman blue ever so slightly.
So with that Drakenhof nightshade applied nicely, what we're going to do is we're going to take some shyish purple. We're going to apply this to the inside of the Zinch head's mouth, including over the top of its tongue. So with that shayish purple applied, we are then going to take some Fire Slayer Flesh and we're going to apply this over the top of our Zinch Head's eye. Like that. We're going to apply it over this little part of the beak. Like so. And then we're going to bring it down into the kind of cheeks of the bird. And so with that done, we are once again going to let it dry just for the moment and we're going to move on to the corn head. Now, the next colour we're going to be using is Black Legion. I apologise, I lied to you. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be applying this over the dreadlocks. Or over the, rather, over the braided hair. Like so. I swear that was the last time we're going to use Black Legion. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we're going to use Sai Shaiish Purple. And we're going to use this over the top of the inside of the corn head's mouth. And we're going to apply this over the top of his gums. And with that shayish purple applied, we're then going to take some Agrax Earthshade. We're going to apply this over the top of the red and we're going to apply this over the top of the horns and the teeth. So with that done, all of the base coats are now on on the corn head, so we can now work our way back across. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some Volupus Pink, and just here in the cheek of our Zinchian head, we're just going to add this in. Like that. And like that. And additionally, I'm going to add a very tiny amount of it around the eyes. And then lastly, on that Zinch head, or at least the last base coat is going to be a shade <laughs> and we're going to apply this this is going to be Reichland flesh shade good lord we're going to apply Reichland flesh shade over the top of the rest of the beak So now it is time to do all of the highlights on our heads. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the Nurgle head and the color we're going to be using is Krieg Khaki. We're just going to be picking out all of the folds and edges very carefully now.
So with all of that Krieg khaki applied, we're then going to take some Screaming Skull and we're going to apply this to all of our Nasdreg yellow sections. Just as little dots. Just like that. So that Screaming Skull applied to all of the boils and pimples. What we're now going to do is we're going to take some Bane Blade Brown. I'm going to use this to highlight the horns. And so with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Pallid Witch Flesh. I'm going to use this to highlight our Nurgle Head's teeth. So with that done, we also highlighted the spine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Yeriel Yellow I'm going to apply this over the eyes. So with that now done, we're going to take some blood for the blood god. And we're going to apply this over the top of our maggots. Because we do that in all of our noble videos. I like them being little bloody maggots. Like that, so we've got two there. We've got one up here. So with that done, the Nurgle head is all finished, so it's time to move on to our Zinch head. And this one's going to be a lot easier, I promise. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some Lothurn blue, and we're going to very gently dry brush this over the top of all of our feathers. with that Lothurn blue dry brush applied, we're then going to take some blue horror. I'm going to be really gentle here. Just catching. The sharpest points. of all of our feathers. So with that blue horror dry brush applied to our zinch head, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a roughly two parts contrast medium to one part Eldari emerald mix. And we're going to apply this over the top along the side here. Like that. And on the other side as well. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some towel light okra. I'm going to use this to highlight the darker part of our zinch head's beak. So this little section here. Heading into the eye. Like that, and then we're 
also going to use this to highlight the outside line of that gum. And with that now done, we're then going to take some Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm going to use that to highlight the inside of the gums. Like that sort of thing. So that Cadian flesh tone applied, we're then going to take some slanesh grey. I'm going to use this to highlight the tongue. So with that slash grey applied, we're then going to take some Ushabti bone. I'm going to use this to highlight the bone section of the beak. And so with that Ushabti bone applied, just to finish off the zinch head, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little dot of Yiri or yellow. I'm going to apply this right in the middle of each of the eyes. So, two down and one to go. And that is, of course, going to be our corn head. So, what we're going to do, just to kick this off, is we're going to take some thinned down Dawnstone. And we're going to use this to highlight our dreadlocks. So with all of that Dawnstone applied, we're then going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet and we're going to use this to highlight the face, the red face. So with that Evil Sun Scarlet all applied, what we're then going to do is we're going to take a little bit of Cadian Flesh Tone once again. We're going to add this to the sharpest points. Around the head. So with that done, the red flesh is now finished. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a tiny little bit of Reichland flesh shade and we're going to add this towards the base of the horns. So with that done, it's very subtle, but it's just enough. What we're going to do is we're going to take some Pallid Witch Flesh and use this to highlight the teeth and the horns. So with that now done, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Slanesh Grey this to highlight his gums and his tongue. And 
And next up, we're going to take some iron breaker. Use that to highlight his nose ring. Like that. So with that iron breaker applied, we're then going to take a teeny tiny dot of Yuri or yellow, just like we've done on all the other eyes. And we're going to add this over the pupil, like so. So with that done, all three of our heads are now finished and Archeon is pretty much there. There's just one last thing left to do. And we've been talking about it for a while, but it is going to be the runes on the rune shield and on Dorgar's breastplate. So what we're going to be doing is much like we've done on Dorgar himself, but slightly differently, is we're going to take some fire dragon bright and we're going to thin it right down with sort of four or five parts of water to make it nice and runny. And we are just going to run this within those recesses. We've got it nice and runny so that it just drops in and fills the space. So with that Fire Dragon Bright applied to the Rune Shield and to Dorgar's Breastplate, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some Yuriel Yellow and on the sigils on Dorgar's Breastplate, we're just going to highlight them. Just like this. So with that year or yellow applied, we're then going to take some Griff Hound Orange, not Fugan Orange. We need this to be a lot stronger here. So we're going to take that Griff Hound Orange and we're now going to apply this over the orange and over the yellow. Just like this. So with that now done, Archeon, the ever chosen, is now finished, as you can see. Look, crook your neck to the right, as you can see around here. There's only just a couple of things left to do, and that is the base and those birds. And so in order to do those, we're gonna start off with some thinned down Mechanicus Standard Gray. And we're going to apply this over the top of our birds and over the top of this kind of front rock formation. Just down here. Just whilst we're waiting for that to dry, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Griff Charger Grey. We're going to apply this over the top of the ruined building. Now in the box art, it's kind of like a sandstone, but I think it merges too much with the body of Dorgar for that. So I'm going to do what I normally do on Sigmar Ruins and just have a little bit of this. And with that Griff Charger Grey applied, we're then going to take some Wildwood. I'm going to apply this over the top of all the little vines. Now 
And with that done, we're then going to take some skeleton horde. We're going to apply this over the top of the skulls. So we've got one just here. And then we've got two around the back. Here. And in there. So with that skeleton horde applied, we're then going to take some iron warriors. I'm going to apply this over this pipe. Just down here. So with that iron warriors applied, we then take some thin down retributor armor. I'm going to apply this over this. I'm guessing it's like a fallen brazier or something like that. Anyway, we're going to be applying the retributor armor over the top of this. Just like that. We've got that other piece of it just around the corner. And you also don't want to forget to get the that little tiny bit just there as well. So with that done, it is now time to add some final shades and recolors. And the color we're gonna be using is Black Templar, <laughs> not Legion. We're gonna be using Black Templar here over the top of our birds. So with that Black Templar now applied and drying, what we're going to do is we're going to take some Nuln Oil and we're going to apply this over the top of our Mechanica Standard Grey Rocks and our Silver Pipe. And with that now done, we're going to take some Fire Slayer Flesh. We're going to apply this over the top of the gold. So with that done, just whilst we're waiting for all of that to dry, now is a good time to actually start putting on the texture paint around all of this negative space and as well as over the top of this soil. We can actually just go right up over above it. That's absolutely fine. So the texture paint I'm going to be using is Sterling Battlemire, but as you'll notice, I've also got a pot of, of rocks here. And this is some ancient modeling gravel from Games Workshop. It's ancient, this stuff. It's about 10 years old. But of course, you can pick up any of those types of things from your favorite providers. And the reason I've got them both open is because what we're going to do is we're going to basically take a huge dollop of Sterling Battlemire on our texture spreading tool. And we're just going to start applying this all over the base. Take another huge dollop. I haven't actually spread that one out too well, the first one, but never mind. So we're just going to get this all spread out around as mentioned up to and including the soil but the reason that we've got the rocks open is because as we go we're going to grab a little pinch of them and we're just going to scatter them in to the sterling battle mire and you just press them down like this you want to do it whilst it's still wet just add a little bit of extra texture onto the base, like that. And we're just gonna go around like this until it's fully covered. So with that done, it's now time to add our last couple of dry brushes. And the first one we're gonna add is Dawnstone. 
I'm going to dry brush this over the top of the birds. So with that Dawnstone dry brush applied to all of our birds, we just have one final one left to do. And that is going to be some Tyrant Skull that we're going to dry brush all over the base, as well as over the top of our painted details down here. So all of the rocks, stonework, And so here we are at the end of the journey. Archeon the Ever Chosen is complete. And this has been a hell of a project to work on that I've loved every single second of. Seeing it come together has been truly joyful. <laughs> it is without a doubt the biggest and most detailed model we've painted on the channel. And to do it all with contrast paint proves once and for all, I hope, that this paint is so much more than just a beginner's tool. I really, really love this. I hope you love this as well, and well, enjoy. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel, and you want to support me further, like these legends and bosses on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster, or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Alternatively, you could become a YouTube member by heading to the channel page and clicking on the join button just here, just like these amazing, wonderful people have done. And if you really like this video or you just want to shoot me some support, you can click on the thanks button just below this video. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.